Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the February 19th regular meeting of Council. The City of Parksville recognizes the people of the Coast Salish Nations and their traditional territory upon which we gather with gratitude. First item this evening is the adoption of the minutes of the Council meeting held on February the 5th. I need a mover and a seconder. Moved by Councillor Salter, seconded by Councillor Beal. Are there any errors or omissions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Thank you, that is carried. The next item is the approval of tonight's agenda. I need a mover and a seconder. Moved by Councillor Beal, seconded by Councillor uh, Oates. Are there any errors or omissions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Thank you. We're starting off under new business. I have a few announcements to make before I go around the council table. A special meeting of council will be held Monday, February the 26th at 6 p.m. in the, this forum to discuss the proposed City of Parks Hill Subdivision Servicing Bylaw 2017, number 1540. Remember that date. The deadline for, for the spring grant and aid applications is March the 1st. $2,500 in funding is allocated to the spring intake and will be awarded by council upon recommendations from a select committee. The application form is available at City Hall or from the website. Third item, the City's annual water main flushing program is now underway and will run until early April. More information can be found on the City's website and you'd do well to look that up to see if you're happening to be in that area when the main flushing program is getting underway. The Parksville's Lions Club and the Rotary Club of Parksville AM continue to raise funds for the city's new splash park. Their next event is St. Patrick's Day Casino Splash on March 17th with a fun casino. Appet appetizers and prizes tickets, which cost $60, may be purchased from Marlin Travel, Parksville Chrysler, and Mount Arrowsmith Brewing. This is a great way to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Next, the budget deliberation meetings are scheduled for March 26th and April 9th. Information about how residents can contribute is available on the city's website. Next, I'd like to remind everybody on February the 27th in 2018, which is later on this month, we'll be meeting with the Minister of Tourism in Victoria. That's members of council. So those of members of council that can come, please let us know. If you're coming, we can make arrangements for car transportation. And uh, finally, I have to comment, um, having been away for a week or two, that uh, I see we gave the town of Qualicum Beach $2,500, but I'm much relieved after reading all of the notes that the $2,500 was, was really worthwhile. So on that note, uh, I have to ask if any, any uh, member of council has, a, has a, any mem anything under new business, and I believe Councillor Beal, you know, I'll start with Councillor Salter. We'll move, down, we'll move from right to left. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and I just want to uh, report on um, a recent meeting that we had at the museum. Um, that was uh, February 10th. And um, so the meeting was uh, good. There was some, there's some really uh, positive people involved with the museum right now. Um, Connie Kuramoto, I think some of, some of you know Connie Kuramoto. She's uh, the person who teaches the uh, Master Gardeners uh, organic gardening um, courses very committed to the community and um, supports gardeners, farmers, and local businesses. Um, Tita Jen Jenton, is, she's a local graphic artist and she's a, a, a supporter um, you know, of markets and also community neighbors and so on. Uh, Trish Moroto, she's also a local farmer. She's moved her family from the city to have a more sustainable lifestyle here in, in our area. Uh, she's actually over in Qualicum. She's also on the, she's very busy, but on the Qualicum uh, Fire Department and so on. She values the balance that a tourism community must develop with its population. Um, and they're all involved in putting together the, uh, the market, um, which will be opening on May the 6th at the, uh, at the, historic, the museum uh, on the grounds. Um, the Mid-Island Public Market is intended to be a community-oriented event, supporting and promoting local producers, artists, musicians, craftspeople, farmers, not-for-profits, regional district, local municipalities, youth participation, and more in an open, fun, and welcoming setting using the Parksville Museum as a unique and educational backdrop. They're, they're very, um, they're very um, uh, positive and very uplifting uh, when, when, you, when you hear their, their ideas for the market. They're going to be opening on a Sunday, uh, which is, uh, they believe is the only public market that's open on a Sunday on Vancouver Island. 
Um, we hope to see people coming to spend the afternoon celebrating our wonderful community with us. Music, food, youth activities, goods and community enrichments are all expected to be on hand. And it is our belief as a management team that if we can have fun supporting our local community, our local community will support us and have fun too. Basically, they just want to have a, a, a place where a community can gather, meet their neighbors, meet their friends, the children can play, and, and there's all sorts of activities as well as the market, the artisans and so on. So I just wanted to pass that along because they're, they're working really hard for that, towards that and um, really refreshing, really refreshing to hear. Thank you for that, Councillor Salter. Councillor Beal. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I do have three items to bring forward. Uh, first of all, at the um, a select committee regarding the Community Park Plan Implementation Committee, at the December 4th, 2017 regular meeting of council, motion 17-332 was passed to establish a community park working group with representation from council and city staff. This recommendation is pursuant to that motion. One, that in accordance section with section 142 of the community charter, the community park plan implementation select committee be established. Two, that the director of administrative services, manager of communications, manager of operations and parks foreman be appointed as community park plan implementation select committee members. And three, that three council members be appointed by the mayor. Mayor Lefebvre appointed Councillor Beal, that's myself, Councillor Burden, and Councillor Oates to the Community Park Plan Implementation Committee. Sorry, it's not Councillor Oates, it's Councillor Powell. Am I correct on that? Yes. Oh. Right. Oh, okay, perfect, perfect. So um, a change. And I had thought that earlier. Okay. So that, forgive me. That's Councillor Beal, Councillor Burden, and Councillor Powell to the Community Park Plan Implementation Committee. Okay, okay we'll have a second seconded by Councillor Powell. Any comments? All those in favor? Thank you. I do have a couple of other items. One, um, the Oceanside Community Arts Council will be coming as a delegation before council in the next month uh, and to share highlights of what's been going on with the Arts Council and also to share information about some projects that they are wanting to bring forward before, um, before council and, and for the city. Also, finally, uh, a Community Forum is coming up this Thursday, that's February 22nd. This is put on by the Oceanside Health and Wellness Network. It's called Charting the Course Together for Health and Wellness in Oceanside. It's a community actions forum and it goes from 10 o'clock till 3.30 p.m. right here, right next door rather, at the Parksville Community and Conference Center. Registration opens at 9.30 and there will be a light lunch preserved. Topics include child wellness, focusing on food security, and mental health for young adults. Uh, if you would like to attend, uh, please contact Carissa, and that's at events.own, O-H-W-N, at gmail.com. Also, if you go to the OWN website, you can find out more about this. Um, it is a, a community actions forum, so it will be focusing on uh, things that can be done by individuals and groups in the community to tackle these important topics. Thank you. That's all from me. Thank you, Councillor Beal. Councillor Powell? Thank you, Worship. I don't have anything. Thank you. Councillor Oates? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, welcome back. And uh, glad we didn't have to explain the $2,500. It was self-explanatory. It was for a good cause. And as Councillor uh, Salter pointed out, the uh, wildlife and the fish know no political boundaries. But we'll be very careful in the future. Uh, early on in our term, uh, if you remember, Mr. Mayor, uh, we, we sat down as a council and we determined, we, we, we identified some priorities, uh, things that we wanted to do as council. A couple of things that stand out for me were the uh, Parksville wetlands up there, uh, which we uh, recently purchased, and uh, another one was the uh, Jensen property adjacent here. And uh, last week there was a report uh, <clears throat> 
on the Jensen uh, Avenue West properties and the public engagement, and we received that report for uh, information. So in an effort to move that a little further down the line, um, I think it's fair to say the council is interested in seeing the large block of land on Jensen Avenue West between Highway 4 and Craig Street being used to its full potential for the benefit of the community. This land provides a valuable opportunity to interested groups to develop a mix of residential and commercial uses complementary to the downtown core within walking distance of many businesses and amenities. Council has heard concerns from many parties about the lack of attainable housing and a diverse housing options in Parksville. And Council has established, established many policies supporting a more walkable community where, it's a re, where there is a reduced reliance on automobile transportation. These lands have been vacant for many years and Council has expressed interest in seeing the block converted to its highest and best use. The current zoning of RS1 is considered a barrier to this goal and therefore I would like to put forward a motion to direct staff to rezone the property to an appropriate zone which facilitates the uses envisioned in per Plan Parksville, the city's OCP and the city's OCP. It is anticipated the new zone would enable a prospective buyer a plan a prospective buyer to plan a desirable project for the lands, making it possible for the city to sell the property for fair market value. Therefore, I move that Council reject all bids received as a result of the October 12, 2017 request for proposals for community engagement on the future use of the city's Jensen Avenue West properties and further move that staff be directed to prepare a zoning bylaw amendment to change the designation of the city-owned lots on Jensen Avenue West and Alberti Highway from Residential 1 RS1 to a zone that permits a mix of commercial and multi-family residential uses consistent with the Plan Parksville designation of mixed use. Edge. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Any member of council? Seconded by Councillor Beale. Discussion? I'll, I'll speak to your worship. Uh, that that uh, piece of land uh, there, it's been, uh, it, I know it was uh, part of your campaign that we do something with it, and I think it's important that we, uh, if there are any barriers to uh, people wanting to develop that land, and it's been identified that its current zoning might be one, this, uh, this would remove that barrier and enable prospective uh, developers to come in with proposals that uh, are fit within the uh, various plans that uh, exist for the downtown and for Parksville in general. Okay, any comments from members of council? Councillor Beale. Um, thank you. Um, I just have some questions uh, perhaps to our CAO. If, if there are, um, are there complications for the city if we going going down this path? And, and I guess in particular I'm wondering about what I've understood as a, a bit of a catch-22 in terms of how one sells property and market value and, you know, whether we're not perceived to benefit from this in certain regards. So I wonder if you could um, clarify things. Uh, yes, Your Worship, I'm happy to, to Councillor Beale. Um, Council isn't in a conflict in doing this um, in putting forward this property for rezoning because basically what doing this does is allows a public hearing and a public forum for people to come forward and provide council with their view with respect to whether or not they want to see this land rezoned um, and possibly sold in the future or whether they don't want to see it rezoned. As long as council is listening to what the public have to say and making their decisions accordingly, then um, it's really a more economical way of determining the views of the community and the public um, for the future use of that particular property. So in your opinion, there's no uh, you know, unforeseen difficulties if, if we move in this direction? No, um, because you have the public hearing process and because that is an opportunity for the public to come forward and make their views known, um, you may find that there is public support for the proposal and you may find that there's not. And as long as you are listening to what the public has to say and, and uh, not going into the process with any perce previously perceived 
outcomes, then I don't see any conflict at all for counsel. One more. And um, with regards to the amount of staff time and, and energy that would need to go into preparing this, is this, uh, and would something like this set us uh, far back in terms of getting other, um, other priorities attended to? Uh, Your Worship, it is our intention, unless otherwise directed by Council, for this to go into the process along with all the other rezoning and developments. We're not giving this a, a high priority. By doing it this way, Council is actually saving staff some work because it's the reporting process isn't as onerous. Councillor Salter. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was aware of this motion coming forward um, um, prior. Um, I, I do support the motion, and I, I support it because the community will be um, expected to come forward and speak to um, how whether they approve or whether they support it or they don't support it. And <clears throat> in my opinion, I think that's the way it needs to be done. Um, if if they think it's a great idea, then regardless of my own personal feelings, I will I will support that. And if they don't, I will support that. So I, I, I think this is a, a, a good idea. I think it's a good motion. I think we do have to we, we do have to come to some some kind of uh, resolution with whatever we're going to do there. And it needs to come from the community. So I, I absolutely support this. Thank you. Councillor Powell. Thank you, Worship. I remember the last time. Oh, I can't even remember what election it was. Anyways, I remember we did the exact same thing. And what happened was it was an election year, as it is this year. And we never got past first base with it because there was such an uproar about it. I support it. I think we need to do something with that property. And again, like Councillor Beal was questioning, it seems to me that there was a legality that we were responsible because we would benefit. And so we sort of, I think we hired a consultant to do the public hearing and everything. And so you're absolutely sure there's no legal, because we will benefit by zone, up zoning. Well, it will certainly, it'll certainly increase the value of the property if we up zone it. But Council is only going to up zone it if it has the approval of the public in order to do that. And so there is nothing that prevents Council from rezoning property that they own um, at any given time to um, provide a public benefit of whatever that development is also going to bring to the city because everybody in the community is a stakeholder in the city's fortunes. And so as we increase our tax base and as we develop the community, the whole community benefits. So I don't see that as a conflict for council at all. Okay, seeing no further, I just have a quick comment to make uh, with something that uh, Councillor Oates brought up. You know, we've been working at this. We've had a number of in-camera debates about which way we want to go, and it, it's, it's long in the tooth. We're in our fourth year of our mandate. So I, I certainly support uh, moving forward on this as, as quickly as we can. So I'm going to call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. That is carried unanimously. We have three delegations no, tonight. No, I don't have anything further. Pardon me? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought, I thought you were... I guess you're used to being the mayor. <laughs> sorry about that. It won't happen again. Uh, we have three delegations tonight. Members of Council, the first delegation is Volleyball BC, the 2018 Annual Volleyball Tournament. And Mr. Chris Densmore, are you here? Come on down. Come to the microphone. Have you got somebody with you? You can introduce that person to members of Council. Welcome. You have 10 minutes. Uh, he's the owner of Oceanside Outdoor Sport. And uh, so I think he's probably presented to you guys before. He's an actual past Parksville resident, and uh, he's the one who runs the beach volleyball leagues in town. So um, I'm going to turn it over to him a little bit as we're just going to go through, give a little history of Volleybash to inform everyone, and then also the new opportunities of what we're looking to do. And at the end, we'll open up to questions. And to be honest, we'd love your, your feedback and to see if you support what we're looking to do. Hi, uh, Council and Mayor. Uh, as Chris said, I'm Shane Hyde. I'm the founder of Oceanside Outdoor Sport, been running the program since, I believe, 91. Um, so I've been around for a while. Um, 
born and raised here. Uh, one of the things that um, that's happened over the last few years is we're finding that the um, uh, the participation in the big volley bash tournament has started to decline a bit. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to do is um, being pretty proud of the event going on to its 28th year. I wanted to bring on Chris Densmore, who is the executive director for Volleyball BC, kind of the big um, player here in, uh, in Canada. And I wanted to bring him on board and partner with them so that we could raise the level of this, uh, this tournament up to the level that it used to be and where we think it should go and, and again put Park Sol on the map for, for beach volleyball, one of the one of the meccas of beach volleyball. So um, I just wanted to come with Chris and uh, and also um, uh, touch base with everyone here as well in case you had some questions about the history of Volley Bash. So I'll turn it over to you, Chris. Thanks, Shane. So one of the areas that we're looking to do is the, the current event had triples and doubles. Um, and where we look at Volleyball BC is our big area is youth volleyball. Um, ages 12 to 18 is our main demographic, but we also are partnering with organizations like Oceanside Outdoor Sport to grow adult volleyball. Uh, volleyball to me is, uh, we call it, it's an active for life sport. Um, everybody uses that within the long-term athlete uh, model, but I think the, the big part of it is it's, it's such a fun sport. Um, so we've looked at this of how we can join together and uh, one of our goals is to add a, a corporate sixes event on the Friday afternoon. Um, we thought this would be a great way to engage businesses. Um, this past year Shaw Cable came on board and uh, videoed the, the finals on Sunday. Um, they're, they've agreed again to come on board and even we talked more about how they could support the event and promote it throughout the entire year. Um, you know, in my mind, I, I live in Nanaimo, and Parksville Beach is the most beautiful beach uh, that we have in BC for volleyball. And uh, so we, joining into this, one of our other goals, to be honest, was uh, the women's national team, indoor national team, is now based in BC. And I'm the chair of the fundraising committee for it. And the main reason of our partnership here is how do we grow this event, make it bigger, make it better, and the number one purpose will be all funds raised from this event will go to support the women's national team. Uh, main changes, I'm going to just hand over to, uh, to Shane. He can talk about that, and then we'll, uh, we'll, I've got some pictures that we'll go through, and as well as a little video. So uh, when this event started 28 years ago, there was a huge committee, um, lo lots of local uh, representation, lots of um, members from across BC that uh, sat on a committee, and um, and that's what we want to do. We want to bring it back to, uh, in fact, right after this, we have a organizing meeting. Um, so we want to we want to bring in some local representation, some people that have been around the sport for a while and the event for a while, and we want to kind of target more, more, as Chris said, uh, more businesses. Um, we want to increase the numbers. Currently right now we have probably about 150 participants on a, on a Saturday and about 150 participants on the Sunday. We'd like to grow that um, so that again um, bring this event to the level that it once was. Um, Back in the day, we had TSN here. We had the Canadian National Championships here. Um, years past, it wasn't that long ago that I was here uh, um, presenting to you guys uh, the, how you guys supported our um, uh, youth national championships. Um, so we're looking more to, to bring this adult pro tournament, youth tournament, corporate sixes, kind of every angle of volleyball and, and really, like I said, make Parksville this event, Volley Bash, huge again. So to give a little background, uh, the next couple pictures are about the Vancouver Open and it's, a, it's one of our largest events. It's actually the same uh, timeline as uh, Volley Bash. It's been going on for 27 years. Um, we have professional staff that run the event. We have volunteer management, security. Um, the beer gardens itself is a very controlled environment. Uh, and there's also for, you know, with our major goal looking at fundraising, there's a sponsorship opportunity when you have a beer gardens. So 
here's a couple pictures of what our current event is. This is Kitts Beach. Uh, this was last year in, in Vancouver. Um, this is the feature court. Uh, I'm not sure we're going to get to that this year, but uh, this is our event would be a little bit larger in scope as to what we do. Um, there's another wide span picture. I guess stuff for you guys to see there, isn't it? Um, so again, here's a little video. Make sure this works. Maybe we're not watching a video. Unfortunately, there's no video. It was a, it's a 30-second little teaser video that just kind of shows the event. Um, I, I know in, in talking with uh, council, uh, Councillor uh, Kim Burden, uh, there were some concerns in the past of, of having beer gardens. Uh, and I really just wanted to show that, you know, through my time, I've been the executive director for seven years. We've ran this event every year in a much larger capacity. And there's been zero issues. Uh, you know, I take pride in how we do this, and you know, we we look at Parksville Beach as as one of our uh, venues that we host other events at, and we want to make sure that we do the same. Uh, when we did host the Canadian National Championships, we came on board. We donated some money to help expand the beach, which we again has been a great benefit to us. So, um, kind of wanted to open it up and and ask for feedback from yourselves to see if this is the kind of event that you guys would support uh, for uh, Volley Bash and for Oceanside Outdoor Resort and Volleyball BC to partner with. Okay, thanks you very much. I, I've got a number of questions, but I'm going to defer to council. Members of council, do you have any questions for the delegation? Councillor uh, Powell and Councillor Beal. Thank you, Worship. I'm just, you probably answered this just to clarify. The whole time that you've been here in Parksville, there's never been a beer, beer garden down there. Is that correct? No, that's incorrect. Um, if for the first probably seven years, there was a there was a beer gardens. Um, beer gardens is only one one of the one of the things that we're looking to increase. Um, but no, during in fact, we used to be sponsored. Uh, some of the uh, the tours were sponsored by Labatt's, um, Jose Cuervo. Some of those bigger companies were were actually the sponsors of the major events. So beer gardens is nothing new for for the was, events on was Parkville there any Beach. Issues with it? Never. There's never been any. Um, in fact, there was. It wasn't even very well attended, to be honest with you. Um, um, but it's, it just adds something where the worst is when you see people come to the event and you're constantly policing people outside the, um, uh, the volleyball uh, program that are drinking, trying to watch, and we have no control of those people. This is an area that now maybe we can do the security and, and do, it, do it the proper way. So right now, are you saying that people are showing up to watch volleyball and they're bringing their own alcohol? We have problems all the time, even on Tuesday nights, Wednesday nights. We have problems with our youth night on Tuesdays of having people that are not associated with volleyball that are crossing through there. Um, and yes, we have that constantly. And I'm usually the one that is the one that has to do the policing of, uh, of that. Yeah, how much it's not a, a drastic problem, but sometimes it is for sure. How much seating are you looking for? Seating? That's uh, in the beer gardens. Is that what we're talking? Um, Chris? Yeah, I, I think we'd be looking at anywhere between 150 to 200 seats, uh, essentially on a, on a feature court. And, and not all seats, standing area or whatever. Like, again, I think there's different, uh, I'm not aware of the exact numbers of uh, for the different licensing. 
Um, but I know like ours in Vancouver was up to 700 people um, is what we had capacity for. Uh, it just depends on the size of the feature court that we're able to do. So essentially, we'd be looking to have bleachers on the two end lines and on the full sideline, and then the other side would be a, the controlled fenced area of the beer garden. Thank you. Um, and I, I was just curious about uh, time of day and, and uh, for the activities, because it does seem to me that volleyball is going to be happening during daylight hours, although obviously it could go into the evening. But I, I was curious if you could uh, fill us in on that. Uh, well, currently right now, we would be finished uh, going by our old um, models. We would start up around 10 in the morning, and we'd be finished 7 o'clock at the latest. Yep. Councillor Salter. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> um, so you're saying you think that you would be seating 150 to 200 people in the beer garden or just in the bleachers? Uh, potentially in the beer garden. Okay. Um, and so what sort of crowds do you think you're going to have? Like how, what kind of a crowd do you think you're going to draw for, for this um, on average throughout the day? Uh, in Vancouver, uh, we had a lot of walk-by traffic, but really it's the volleyball community. Uh, our goal here is to engage people from, we know there's, there's leagues that run in Port Hardy, Port Alberni, all the way down island to Victoria, um, but we're also looking to bring people over from the lower mainland. Uh, the majority of the people who would be using this would be the participants. Um, it's just providing them an opportunity as they finish throughout the day, um, have a drink or whatever, and then they're, they're finished and, and again, but we weren't able to show you in the video, but it's, uh, it creates a fun atmosphere. Uh, we're in the finals right now. I, I think it's unfortunate. We have a lot of people that do leave. Uh, we want to find a way to keep people that are there and enjoy the, the activity. And anyone from the community uh, can come in and watch. Um, it, it is youth and adult based. So the, you know, we typically do have quite a few parents uh, that are around that they come into the beer gardens as well. I'm just, yeah, I'm, because you're doing this on Labor Day weekend, so it's kind of uh, one of those weekends where families are at the beach with their kids, and so I'm, you know, it looks like it looks like a lot of that you're taking up a lot of space in the park. I don't know, um, I could be wrong on that, but that many people would be. Um, I'm just thinking, what would pe what would parents with their children in buggies be doing if you're got a beer garden going on with the volleyball? I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, I think to. Uh, we we would, the beach, the, the beer gardens would be on the beach volleyball court area. So essentially we would be, you know, I think the beach holds up to 32 courts on the main beach. Uh, we would take away a few of those courts and that's where the feature court would be made. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't really be taking any other area up on the beach. It would just be on the beach volleyball area that we're using. And then you stated that people come down, um, even though there's not a beer garden, they're still coming down with beer. So if you had a beer garden and then, you know, I show up with a bottle of beer, but I'm not in the beer garden, how are you going to police that? Are you going to police that or is that an RCMP thing? To well, <laughs> that would be something that we would definitely have to police for sure. For one of the reasons being um, the beer gardens would also supply this with some sponsorship money towards what the, the whole idea of this. So there's two reasons. One, we don't want them there on the beach because they shouldn't be there. Two, um, there's, you know, there's somewhere that they can go to if they want to have a beverage. Um, there's a there's an area that's supplied. So definitely that would be part of the mandate that we would have security security for everything, not 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 just the drinking. Um, it'd be security for for everything. Okay. So just and I just want to say I think there's some counselors here who do recall what happened. Um, several many years ago now at the sandcastles with the beer gardens and um, um, and, and I know there's a lot of people in, in our community that um, have you know it is left um, a lasting impression for them and so that so that's why I'm asking these questions I think I think for me it would be important that the community were able to you know um, have some input into this because I, I know what happened I mean there was pepper spray and everything else happening that it was that night it was crazy if i could speak to that i am a long time resident here and i was actually 
I was there. I was. I was. Um, I wasn't there there, but I was a, a resident. <laughs> but um, we we have had actual beer gardens many times yeah. after uh, the sandcastle uh, of that year, um, and and we are not looking for anything anything like that. That's not the the idea. This isn't going to be something that is a is a full party. This is just a. It's like going to a hockey game and 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 watching and having a beverage while you're watching that kind of thing. It just adds to the to the um, the spectator uh, involvement of the of the event. Because right now, like Chris said, the finals. By the time the finals hit, everybody's gone, and and that's when we have our shot cable, and that's where we have our you know the big uh, competition. That's where you want the spectators in there. Usually, usually gone. Well, thank you, thank you for your presentation, and thank you for answering questions. Councillor Rhodes. Uh, thank you. Uh, what time of the day would you anticipate you'd be shutting down each day? Um, as I said earlier, we usually start at around, the competition usually starts around 10, and the uh, the finals would, would be finished roughly 7 o'clock at, at night. And you um, wouldn't be requesting the beer gardens no. or the, anything extend beyond that? No, it's it's once the competition's done, the competition's done. Obviously, there would be takedown. Uh, it is a multiple-day event, so it's a Friday, Saturday night. Um, and then uh, and then Sunday is the is the last competition, and um, yeah. With respect to the feature court and any additional bleachers uh, that would be required and setting up the controlled access area, is the expectation that the city of Parks will supply the, that material, or is that something that you would be supplying, or how does that work? Uh, in the past, when we hosted the national championship, the Canadian Nationals here, the bleachers were provided. Um, I'm not sure if that's changed, if that's still an option that to be available. Uh, the fencing and everything needed for the beer gardens would be taken care of by us. Uh, we want to make sure we're in 100% control of all of the control access, uh, all of that. So when we do it in Vancouver, we are in charge of all of that. But the the, uh, the bleachers in the past have been supplied by the municipality, so. I guess we'd be could be expecting us to uh, to uh, set it up and take it down and that sort of thing is that what that yeah I mean we're more than willing to support out however um, uh, you know I'll be honest it's it's uh, creative budgeting trying to find ways I mean it's a fundraising event so you know it's not money going in my pocket or Shane's pocket uh, you know we're looking to find ways to do that so yeah if we can if we have to pay for them uh, we will pay for them because that's a part of the event that we think is very important no I'm not I'm just trying to oh. get a sense of what uh, what the ask is uh, from the city, so. <laughs> we have the same question, uh, you know, because I've already filled out an application. Uh, you know, it's all ready to go. But I, I think there was just uh, we want to make sure that we're being upfront about what we're looking to do. Um, the fact that this event is something that we really want to expand. Um, as the provincial sport organization, we have access to way more people across the entire province. Uh, that we want to promote this event. Uh, we want to bring the women's national team over here to help uh, volunteer at the event. So there's just those parts of it. Um, um, so it was really, it was trying to make sure that you're aware of it, see how, what you had, the great questions that you guys are bringing up tonight, and, and yeah, looking for the support, and then obviously we'll put in our application. One, one final question. Is this something that you foresee as being an annual event, or is this a one-time deal? Annual event. Thank you. Councillor Beal. Thank you, Worship, and uh, thank you, Councillor Oates, for asking some of the questions that I was wondering about as well. Um, uh, now, perhaps to Mr. Diggins, if you are able to help us out here. Um, so from what you're saying, it's not anticipated that you would need additional space from previous volleyball events, is that correct? And Okay. All right, and um, so perhaps, uh, Mr. Diggins, are, I understand that there have been some concerns about the amount of wear and tear uh, with such an event, but is it anticipated that the volleyball area would continue as it has in uh, recent years? Uh, if I may, Your Worship, to Councillor Beal. Uh, no, we're not, we're not anticipating any issues at the Bleach Volleyball Court. 
And I would like to add that I've certainly attended many events, whether be they be music festivals or sporting events or a gathering at the end of a celebratory day in a park that have had, um, you know, a beer garden as part of the activities and, and you know, not seen any issues at all. It can be, you know, a nice addition to, to the events of the day. So um, uh, now a question, again, I'm not sure to whom, but um, are there particular particular permits, or are you familiar with any sort of requests for permits or what is needed in order to do special events down at the park, or Mrs. Colmas, are you able to help with that? Mrs. Colmas, Mr. Diggins? If I may, Worship Councillor Bill, actually the, uh, the beach volleyball uh, organization already submitted an application for this event in particular, uh, well, for a series of events down at the beach volleyball courts. Uh, the only difference is that the presentation that was shown the information is, is, is a slightly different so any deviation from that application will require an amendment to the application permit so that we can review it uh, so I'm just curious again is there anything that's needed from council in order for this to move forward with uh, you know including the request for the beer garden which I gather is slightly different from previous years or if that's something that can be handled at the staff level Mrs. Coolis? Yeah, with respect to the beer garden there's provincial licensing that they have to fulfill in order to do that and and uh, our agreement or our Special events application requires a deposit and liability insurance, so all of that's taken care of. If, if I could recap, what I, what I heard from you this evening is that the, the, the size of the volleyball field stays the same. You're looking after, in your application, you're looking after all the controls in terms of monitoring and security, security measures and that sort of thing. You, you finish at what, late afternoon, early evening? It's all over? 7 o'clock. You do the cleanup? Yes. Uh, so the, the really the only thing, when you submit your application, I guess we'll have another look at that, Mrs. Comas, would we at the time? Would that be brought forward to council, no? No, Your Worship, it's an internal process. Well, it's a standard, it's a standard yep, process. it's a standard process. Okay. The bleachers concerns me. How many people would be sitting in the bleachers estimate, ballpark estimate? I think it depends on the size of the bleachers, but I think there are four or five row bleachers, so they typically hold, uh, you know, 30 to 40 people per bleacher. I think last time we had a total of six bleachers there. Did, did we did we rent the bleachers? Um, the the bleachers actually came for our uh, national youth nationals that we uh, we hosted, um, and I know there was some problems with. Um, um, transportation, bringing them down, um, securing them properly for the for the uh, uh, the sand. But um, every year we've done it. Um, every year that we have done it, there hasn't been too much of a problem. But I don't know if those bleachers are actually still um, around to use. That's probably the the major issue. Anybody on staff, Mr. Diggins, you know much about the bleachers and the rental cost and that sort of thing? Yes, if I may. I'm, well, I'm not sure about the rental cost. Um, I'd have to confirm with, with staff what the status of the bleachers are. Okay. Final question? Thank you, Your Worship. And so, I, I'm not sure who to address this to. I know that we have in our agreements that nothing is supposed to be left overnight in the park. Does that mean you set up and take down every day? Is that what the requirement is? No, it's no overnight camping in the park. So it, where we've run into problems in the past has been when people have wanted to stay overnight in the park too. Oh, okay, great. Councillor Rhodes? Uh, I just, just want to make a comment. The park is a very sensitive topic, as you can tell, and I, and I, and I uh, want to commend you to come in, for coming forward and inoculating us to the what it is you're uh, proposing to do. I like the profile that your organization could bring to our park and to the area. I, 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 and I think that, um, um, you know, there's, there's, there's a certain school of thought that there's too many events down in the park, but um, there's also those that would like to see more. And, and uh, I think some controlled use of our park is uh, something that is appropriate going forward. 
And, uh, you know, I, I encourage you to make the application. Uh, you, you know we are sensitive to what happens down there in the park, but I, I really appreciate that you came forward and, and addressed it with council to, I guess, gauge council's interest. Um, it is a sensitive area, uh, but it, it, also prov it is also our crown jewel, and to not show off our crown jewel would be a shame as well. So I wish you much luck. I'm encouraged by a statement you made earlier. You said it's the most beautiful beach in all of BC and probably many other places around the world and in Canada. Pardon me. <laughs> so I guess I'll throw it back at you. You're saying it's the most beautiful beach in all of BC and we expect from you to keep it the most beautiful beach in all of BC. So thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, the next delegation we have is Mr. Antonio Farina. Mr. Farina, please come forward. Mr. Farina, I must tell you that when I saw your comment about aircraft carriers, I've seen aircraft carriers in San Diego. They're big machines. Looking forward to hearing what you have to say about aircraft carriers. Okay, Mr. Farina, you have 10 minutes, and I um, want to introduce your, your fellow presenters. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I want to introduce you Bill Newfield, Enrico and I. Never heard of him. Uh, two Canadians, which I admire them very much for their courage, integrity, and honesty and uh, being taxpayers of the, the corporation of uh, Parksville here, I give them the right to speak instead of me, I'll come after. Thank you. Who's gonna speak first? Mr. Newfeld. Thanks very much, your mayor, uh, your worship, I should say, and good evening, uh, mayor and council. Thanks very much for the opportunity to make this presentation on behalf of Mr. Farina and, and also uh, Mr. Honeiser. Both of us have uh, 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 you know, attempted to be on council and I made it at one point, uh, but that's beside the point. We, we do know each other, a little bit of it. Before we get into the topics that uh, were on the application of homelessness, casino, and Surfside, really what I want to do is I want to introduce this gentleman on my left, uh, Mr. Farina, and, and he is a gentleman who is often derided, uh, but in fact who has a tremendous amount of passion for Canada and for Parksville. And it is uh, Antonio Farina, or Tony for short. And 
Mr. Honeiser, Rick Honeiser, you know, did attempt to become mayor a couple of sessions ago and unfortunately did not qualify. Now, as far as Tony is concerned, the gentleman is multilingual. His English was the last language that he learned, and it is with that language he has most difficulty in expressing himself. He, in fact, is an extremely educated and skilled individual, and he, in fact, was flying F-86 jet fighters back in the 1950s. He has studied law. He has taken on the union and had a fight with it, and it was involved with a corrupt union and won that case. Tony is 86 years old this year, and, in fact, I've known him since before his 80th birthday when I met his extended family from Europe and from here in town, and it's a fascinating odyssey that he has been on for the last 86 years. A tremendous person, and I feel very proud to be a friend of his. People laugh at him. They look at me and say, you know, what the hell are you doing even knowing the man? But, in fact, he is a brilliant individual, and it's a passion that I have, and it's a passion that he has as far as the country is concerned and Parksville. He still lives here. He lives at 321 Alberni Highway, and he is there. Now, having introduced the two gentlemen, Rick on my right and Tony on my left, we'll get into the three topics that are on the agenda. The first one, as far as the homelessness is concerned and the purchase of an aircraft carrier, well, you're right, Mr. Mayor. I'm glad it got your attention. That's what I was supposed to do. You know, Tony finds the homeless situation deplorable here in Parksville, and that's particularly given that six years ago, Duncan was already addressing their homeless problems with accommodation. This is six years ago. Similarly, Campbell River at the time was taking action to alleviate their homelessness, and we in Parksville had the opportunity, and we scuttled, unfortunately, the situation as far as a low-income housing situation at the old Post and Lantern. You know, that lot sits empty where the Lemon Twist was now, and, you know, when I was on council, we actually gave them permission to build a condo project that was going to have a $600,000 price tag for each unit. A lot of difference between $600,000 and the low-income housing that we could have possibly put in there. So the questions that he asks, and he asks this with all seriousness and passion, but the questions that he asks is, why has nothing been done in Parksville other than hold buffet dinners without any homeless attending? In fact, it seems that there was a dinner here, and I'm not part of it. I don't know how it occurred, that, in fact, you know, why haven't we been asking the people that need our help what they need and what they want? And he has the impression that we don't have their input. We may have it, but it isn't well disseminated as far as the information is concerned. So the aforementioned questions are those that he would put to council. As far as the aircraft carrier is concerned, would you want to live on an aircraft carrier? I know that I wouldn't, and you probably wouldn't want it either. Even though aircraft carriers have hospitals, have educational facilities, have toilets, have, you know, secure facilities, you know, it's not something that, in my opinion, I'm expressing my opinion now, not Tony's, that, in fact, you know, to moor an aircraft carrier out in the Salish Sea would be an inhibitance as far as the obstruction to passenger traffic on that road. So we'll leave that. With respect to the casino, given the fact that there are already several on the island, particularly close to Parksville, such as Alberni, Courtney, Dynamo, and that the great Canadian Gaming Corporation has no interest in Parksville, 
let's just pass on that one as well which brings me to the third issue on the agenda and that being surfside and this is where where uh, uh, mr. Honeiser has been involved with it uh, and and Tony uh, very much so and if you look at the the um, the beach that you have in front of you the picture I think is is tremendous and that that isn't the picture that I've just given you or that was just distributed to you but in fact I think that that is a, a wonderful beach uh, you know the, the the interesting thing is that you look at that and you say it's priceless but if you look at the 1965 picture that I've handed to you shows you what the what the beach looked like in 1965 and that that is a uh, a picture of floodlands and that's what the um, uh, the ladies of of the uh, who had the vision uh, 100 years ago 1924 was I believe uh, to buy all of that land for the community park and it was in fact floodland it was it was a a gorgeous piece of property and it uh, I think it uh, 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 has been maintained and that which is up on the board, right, or at least up on the um, overhead, is um, uh, really e exemplifies uh, what, what uh, a beach can be. On the other hand, if you wind up going to uh, the, the, the photos that are behind that handout that I gave you, uh, there's a series of black and white photos of the changes that have been wrought by the owners of what, are known, what is now known as Surfside, which Tony contends are illegal, involve a conspiracy and in which Parksville does not enforce its own bylaws. So you have a, a situation where the, the, the photographs, the black and white photographs, highlight a phenomenal dumpage of raw material and um, armor stone rock size uh, on the beach, on on what was uh, a property that came into uh, Parksville, as far as the, the uh, from the RDN in 1981, uh, and it it, it uh, is significantly different from the the uh, picture that I've shown you, as far as 1965 is concerned. So, so, Mr. Uh, Mr. Newfeld, can I ask you to wrap up? Okay. We've got a delegation yep. coming after you, and yep. the 10 minutes is just about up. Okay. Um, so the, the situation being that uh, with all of that rock and, and uh, uh, armor stone having been placed there, it has a dysfunctional effect on the currents, on fish habitat, on uh, the native flora and fauna in the uh, bay and the estuary, and and so uh, it's a case that uh, some people would say it's destruction. Some case is some people would uh, call it uh, development. And not even the Department of Oceans and Fisheries uh, has reacted. The practice of wholesale uh, placement of the fill certainly is not a, 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 na a case of uh, natural accretion. The placement continues. And to that, uh, both uh, Mr. Honeiser and I can bear testament to the role of recent rock additions uh, within the last few years. So Mr. Farina basically is a disruptor. And just as other disruptors have been derided in the past, one being uh, Nikola Tesla, one being Einstein, one being Musk, who has just sent a cherry red Tesla around the, around the sun on an elliptical or orbit. You know, Tony, Tony is now being uh, a disruptor in, in many ways. And his disruption is, is with respect to governance and the rule of law. And so, the question that he asks is, why, and I quote this, why is the part of Parksville exempt from the enforcement of Parksville bylaws, unquote. And Tony has greater knowledge of the law than I do, and therefore, you know, if whatever amount of time that you will allow him, he would like to uh, uh, speak to that issue himself. And, and I would uh, uh, apologize for... Uh, uh, his ability to, to do okay, so. Your, your time is up, so I'll give you, I'll give you another minute or two. Mr. Farina, do you wish to speak? Uh, yeah, I wish to speak. Uh, um, in, in, in 1990, I saw an affidavit. And in that, I don't have that affidavit. And that affidavit was re written by a surveyor, which he said uh, it was not that 
spit. He mentioned the spit. It was not a float plane anymore, <clears throat> and therefore the, the, the owners should acquire that land by accreditation. That means they don't pay one dollar for that land. The point is that when you acquire the land for accreditation in the, in the flats, you can't build nothing. This must be done only by nature, come and go. As I see and I understand, so there are no boundaries down there, no, no border. So 20 years from now, after all that rocks are up, and then they, the, the owners of that place who got that land for nothing without paying one dollar, because they're gonna claim that land again. Now the point is that the beach, in my opinion, is getting destroyed. The peop millions of people come to Parksville because of the beach, not because of the Chamber of Commerce, but because of the beach. I used to sleep with my kids in that in that spit in the 60s. So, Your Honor, I don't know how to go at, at, at that, but I ask it, Your Honor. You know, I have two Cana three Canadians, two Canadians with a lot of courage born here. And I ask it to you to help them, to embrace them, not to try to destroy them, to acquire an investigation by the RCMP, get the RCMP commercial crime and find out how they got that land. We the, we the taxpayers gonna pay millions of dollars to throw rocks down there. But the beach is going to be destroyed. You can see it. Every, everybody can see it. Every day it gets more rocks and more rocks. So I ask you, members of share, share of the corporation, to help these people and to somehow try to save the beach for Parksville for the future generations, for, for the business. The business should be the ones who are more interested. In. But it seems to me but nobody does nothing. Nobody, nobody enforced, even, even here, I give you the paper, it says here, the bylaws are right here. It says all the, after 180 days, after 180 days, everything is to move out of there. Well, they say it was not at the flood plain in 1976. Then why they built that brick wall of 40 feet high? In 1999, I tried to find out to give authorization for building that rock, uh, that uh, 40 feet high of, of rocks there. Well, obviously that now is destroying all the beach of Parksville. Nobody gonna be liable. Nobody <laughs> gonna be responsible for that thing. And the beach is destroyed. If you destroy something, you are responsible. Okay, thank you, Mr. Farina. Um, members of council, any questions for the delegation? Councillor Salter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I don't disagree with you. Uh, the riprap was added. Uh, it was a floodplain, I remember. And, and I know that, um, I know what happened after the riprap got put in there. Um, I don't know whose watch that happened on. Um, but what I do know is, you're correct, it is, it is damaging the beach that we now see right here because of the way those currents come around that around that point and into the bay at, at, which is why we ended up with a board rock, uh, <clears throat> a boardwalk and all those other problems that we're having with the beach there's no doubt that's occurred um, but <sighs> legally people that are at surfside now have signed hundred year uh, tenancies so I'm not sure how council now would be able to undo something that was done at that time. And we're talking, you know, how many years ago? And I, as I say, I, I don't even know whose watch that happened under. I don't know who was. Oh, I had, a, I had a contacted the provincial government about that wall that they dumped there. And they had put an investigation in it. And they investigated it and said, told me that was illegally done. But because the city, controls that part of the beach would first have to say something, would have to do something. 
but they told me that it was illegal, and then the federal government said it was illegally done. So, but this, again, the city has failed to uh, act on it. Okay, so, Councillor Salter, do you have any more questions? No? One quick follow-up, we're Mr. getting, we've got another delegation. <clears throat> So, uh, you know, when you speak to the, be, the feds, you know, saying it's up to the city, I just have to say, though, <clears throat> uh, the feds override us, and so does the province. No, no, not if we, we well, they, they said it was illegal fisheries. Legally done. And, and, and and in fisheries the are the feds. I really appreciate your coming forward, and um, I'm sure that we're going to take this into consideration and um, talk about what possibly could occur in future. Yeah. Mrs. Mrs. Comis, do you want to make a statement at this point in time? I mean, I would, but we're, we're dealing, we're dealing with some of those issues and we're dealing with certainly with the beach erosion and the beach issue. Yeah, Your Worship, the city has undertaken capital projects to um, ensure that we limit beach erosion as much as we can in the areas, but everything that we do is subject to provincial control and the provinces very aware of the riprap in front of Surfside. They know it was done without the appropriate authorizations, um, but until the province chooses to take action with respect to that, um, nothing is going to change. It is totally outside of the city's purview. We can't even do any work on what people consider our own beach without permitting from the province. It works part of the wildlife management area. so. We are totally out of, have absolutely no control over any of that. Councillor Oates. I was not going <clears> to <throat> comment at all on this until I heard the presentation. And you know, <clears throat> I certainly admire anybody that is, is an ally or friend to the beach. And I certainly admire anybody that would come to council and say we could uh, get into some enterprise like a casino to help generate revenue. But for the life of me, I can't understand why you tied that to an aircraft carrier to the homeless for the homeless. It's to me like you're making a mockery of the issue and you're using it as a political pawn to get, you said that it got your attention. Shame on you if that's what it took to think that you had to get this council's attention that you had to, to make a joke of that very, very serious issue. Because we do take that issue very, very seriously and we've made some concrete steps to address the issue. But to come before this council under the pretext of talking about an aircraft carrier for the homeless and then get into the real issue which is about Surfside, I don't know who you think you're fooling, but you're not fooling me. I, I'm, 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 I, you know, shame on us for even allowing it to be on the agenda. With the aircraft carrier, it was my intention to come here with the aircraft carrier and to dedicate myself to the, the aircraft carrier. But I consult with uh, Mr. Bill, and Mr. Bill told me if I come here with the aircraft carrier, uh, going to be a mockery out of, uh, of uh, so, but I will come back with the aircraft carry. I promise you. I promise you. Okay, I'm going to end this. Thank you for your presentation. I just want to tell you that if offline, if you want to find out what we've done for the homeless, we've done a number of things with the Lions Club, with uh, the Kinsman Club. Uh, there's a whole lot of things going on. And it's not an easy situation because of funding. We don't have funding for homelessness in the city of Parksville. That's not a municipal responsibility. It's a provincial and federal responsibility. And we're dealing with these, with these levels of government as best we can. So on that note, I'm going to thank you for your presentation. And unfortunately, we have to move on. We've thank got another you. delegation. Thank you very much.
Yes, uh, good evening, uh, Worship and Council and staff. Uh, with me tonight is Dave McGrath from Winsley Architecture. Uh, Winsley put together the plans for uh, our proposed project on uh, Dogwood Street. Uh, just a little background, uh, my role uh, is a, a representative of the owners of the property, uh, local local group of business guys. Uh, the, uh, the same uh, parcels of property were actually uh, brought before council, this council in uh, 2008. Uh, we're at third reading and due to the economic circumstances of the time, uh, the gentleman didn't uh, proceed at the time. Uh, one material change since uh, the 08 approval of third reading was the fact that these fellows have purchased uh, another piece of, of land. So there's uh, a three, there's there's a total of four parcels now, as opposed to the three parcels that uh, uh, that were approved in uh, 08. Uh, I think now you, you guys have got the information package before you, but I think I'll pass it to uh, uh, David from Winsley, and he can kind of walk through uh, the details of the project. Good evening, Your Worship, Council Members, staff. Um, Winsley Architecture is a uh, Vancouver Island firm, architectural firm. Uh, we have an office in Langford. We also have an office in Vancouver. Um, what we're proposing to do is a 63-unit uh, rental. Uh, residential project. Um, I can quickly kind of walk you through uh, uh, the plan uh, so you get a better idea of what it is. Uh, just a bit larger here. So what we're proposing uh, is a four-story wood frame with underground parking of uh, 68 parking stalls, so 1.1 parking stalls per unit. Um, we pride ourselves in our in our unit plans, and what we've done is very uh, well designed, uh, efficient units where uh, it's able for two bedroom units. Um, out of the 63, it's uh, 35 of them, uh, and out of uh, we also have 28 one bedroom units. Uh, one bedrooms are about 600 square feet, um, and the two bedrooms are about 850. Um, what we find in um, in a lot of municipalities along the island is that uh, there is a rental. Uh, issue. Uh, uh, there is not enough for for uh, the population. I believe here is 0.5 uh, in the NIMO is is uh, one or less than one percent, and we're finding this everywhere. And what we're trying to do is bring some uh, much needed uh, rental uh, development into this. Um, what we're also doing too is uh, I believe that there's a, a part of the uh, the rezoning is that we do about $200 per unit for firefighting um, a training center that is going uh, into that. Um, but let me just kind of walk you really quickly through through this. Um, it, it's on Dogwood. Um, it is um, uh, the cross street of Bay Street and uh, the Old Island Highway. Um, this was three units before, or three lots, um, and uh, uh, which had, in, I believe, in 2008, had already gone up to third reading, uh, is my understanding. Um, so we're kind of taking this, and, and there's now a new lot to it. We've expanded the role to it. Um, initially, we had started off with about 80 units, but we figured that the 63, just to accommodate the parking and not to, uh, not to, because uh, it is a single family residence around there. So it took that into consideration. We do have a traffic study also uh, as part of your package in there, and, and shows that it, it isn't in comparison to to the existing conditions uh, around that neighborhood. Um, we have, uh, what we have done is underground parking that, that goes through the north end, uh, uh, through the site. Uh, we have provided an amenity space to the, um, to the uh, northwest corner of the site as well. And we also have surface parking in order to, to make up for uh, the, the 68 parking that we have. Um, it is set back um, 7.29 uh, meters away from the uh, rear property yard uh, in order to give as much room to the existing single family homes in the back area there. We've also taken into consideration that there are significant fir trees and, and, uh, and uh, um, other pine as well, um, cedar uh, in the back area there. We, we are proposing a four story building which is 12.9 meters in height. Uh, but we've also set it back from the street level in order to, to kind of fit in with what the setbacks of the existing homes are in that area. Um, 
I believe if you take an image of or look at the image that we are proposing on it, it's a modern West Coast contemporary. And it is using very durable materials. There is Sagapur, which is a very hardy material as well as hardy, but to keep the maintenance down as much as possible. And also we've done the flat roofs, some shed roofs with pop-ups to get some of that interest to it, but also to keep it as low as possible to it, not to be too much of, of course, it's different than from the single family homes that we're dealing with here, but we do want to get the density. So we're going from RS1 and RS2 to allow us a higher density in this area. I think everything else that Sean kind of took from my reading notes, so I'll leave it at that and if you have any questions for me. Members of council, this is on the agenda this evening. Any member, any questions? I've got Councillor Beal, Councillor Powell, Councillor Beal, and Councillor Salter. Thank you, Your Worship. I know, can you go back to where the parking lot is? Sure. Now, can you tell me where the garbage cans are located? Because I did read the public comments. How set are you in having them in there still? Because I know we don't comment that on, we don't have any control over tonight, but it's something to take, because that was a pretty common theme throughout the comments. And so will you take that again? Just remember that when you come forward to do the next step. So there is, in order to maximize the parking spaces, we could either do garbage, we can also do down in the bottom, which means bringing out the bins out to the street level and having them being serviced that way. Or we can have it within the parking space itself, parking lot, and have them serviced so that we're not interfering with anything on the public thoroughway. And so we chose to keep it in this location. Within the site itself, we can probably look at other areas if it is an issue with neighbors and any other. Thank you. Councillor Beal and then Councillor Salter. Thank you, Your Worship, and thank you for your presentation. Yes, I too noted that comment about the dumpsters in there and was hoping that you would consider moving them closer to the street so as to have less impact on neighbors. But I understand that won't be the topic tonight anyway. What I am curious about is that you're planning for one and two bedroom suites, but there are no three bedroom suites, so this is not really anticipated to be generally family accommodation. Was there any thought to including any three bedrooms in this development? I think, I mean, we did broach the subject, but it was more in keeping with, we look at Parksville as a whole and seeing what is right now mostly required. And what we're finding is that you look at businesses around and it's hard to find staff and businesses are really suffering from that. So we thought that we would accommodate that. So if you look at, and I'll point out something on our unit plans themselves, is that our unit plans also, like the two bedroom units, they're done in a way that we're not creating a hierarchy in it. So we're not creating a master bedroom and then some subsidiary second bedroom. They're actually, if you look at it, we're actually creating two equal master bedrooms, I guess you could call it. So it really opens it up to rental. So friends can go in there and say, be able to split the rent kind of half and half, right? If you also notice on this, we've included a storage area in each of those units, which means that it's not only just facilitating your everyday living things, but also your storage, your Christmas stuff, your luggage, all of that as well. So we're really kind of more focusing on just the workforce, I guess. One, just to speak to your question, one of the things that the owners were very definite about, and they wanted the council to know that we worship, is that there's no age restrictions on this building. So that it is an inclusive building. And if a family could make things work with bunk beds and stuff like that, that they're more than welcome in this building. Councilor Salter, Councilor Oates, and then back to Councilor Powell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I have a couple of questions. And one is, so you're saying this is really for workforce, people sharing maybe. What sort of rents do you plan on charging? I'm not privy to that. We've looked at the market rents in the Parksville area, 
and i think that all we can really say at this time is you know the units have been created to give a diverse range of rentals for the community that's one of the reasons why we went down to the six hundred square feet is to be able to provide you know housing for people at that level like good accommodation as well as those you know bigger units that um you know again maybe people can share share the rent so at this time you don't know the what you're going to charge for rent no there's no set rental and so follow up was uh again um i did also read about the garbage but i also read about the fence site and so on i know we'll speak to that later but it's important at least to me that you do really take uh into consideration be a good neighbor and read what the neighbors have uh put forward with regard to um issues that they're having so that this goes really smoothly and everyone's happy with everyone and you know sort of keeps every keeps everything um moving along and uh and it's a welcoming community for everyone so it's just important to me that you do read those that feedback that there was some good feedback in there that that comment though i'm sorry i didn't i didn't catch what that first one was the garbage enclosure and the next one that you the fan site the uh fence. yeah just just it's just on your pat it should it should have it yeah you you will have that report that came from the community the feedback from the community and yep. just yeah taking a look at that they're not big issues um i don't think for you to mitigate i think you can mitigate them and just uh, and i think it just makes for a really good um um introduction into the neighborhood and, and everyone's happy and it just flows nicely that way and one comment uh you know just for the worship and council that uh, again the owners were hoping to convey tonight is that uh they did, uh, at their own accord, uh, with discussions with the planning department, put a five-year co covenant on the building so that it can't be turned to condos. It's, this is a rental building. Uh, and the other thing that uh, is very important for them to know is that uh, they're chomping at the bit to get building. This is not an exercise uh, to come to council to get a rezone on a piece of property. Uh, they're they're ready to go. The financing's in place, so this is just a matter of us working with uh, the staff and, and hearing from council and the community and uh, moving forward. Okay, Councillor Oates. Thank you. Uh, what's the total number of units? 63. 63 units, and of those, how many are uh, one bedroom? Uh, there are 28 one bedrooms and, and 35 so two bedrooms. 35 two bedrooms, okay, thank you. Uh, well, I know uh, that sort of housing is sorely needed here in this town. Um, the uh, bin location there that seems to be a bit of an issue or seems to be a bit of uh, a concern for some people, I'm wondering if in the future uh, the, uh, the the city or the RDN got into a more uh, robust waste diversion system, we got into the uh, composting business or something, would uh, would your area where your bins are ha have the ability to be adapted for sorting for that sort of material? Typically, we what we do um, is we have kind of a formula for the number of units and the number of uh, um, sleeping quarters in those units, and we figure out that this one took two, I believe it's three yard uh, cubic yard bins, and then. Uh, a substantial amount of, of recycling. So you see these little boxes, they're all, all recycling. So we are anticipating that we're gonna have a, a program where it is all uh, uh, sorted. Um, may I ask a question though? I know that the, the, the comment of the garbage location, is, is it about the, the smell or is it about the, the visual impact? Councillor, Councillor, I'm sorry, Councillor Powell? You want? You still want to go? Okay, Councillor Powell and Councillor Beal. I would just like to say I was here in 2008 when we approved the last one, and when this came across my desk, I was looking at it and saw the five-year commitment for rental only. I have to say I'm very, very happy to see that because we are so short of rentals, and with Airbnb, it's really hard to find something in this community. I sold my house and couldn't find anything. So, kudos to you guys. Councillor Beal, and then Councillor Salter. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. And to answer your question before my comment, the no, the issue with the bin placement is that it's by the back and and therefore adjacent to those single family dwellings behind so i mean honestly just moving it forward still being out there so that there's less noise as i think 
we know they're sometimes collected early or late or whenever they are. So it's just to minimize the noise uh, for neighbors. That was the comment that I read time and time again. But I would just like to say thank you so much for saying that, for stating, so I'm, I'm holding you to this, I'll find you, um, that in fact this is a go ahead because I was concerned when I'm reading this, sounds great, I know there's a great need for rental, a more affordable rental, not high-end rental, and um, but I was concerned that perhaps this uh, rezoning, if it goes ahead and then nothing happens and then it's sold and you know and and we just wait forever and or maybe it doesn't happen. So I'm thrilled to hear you say that it really is a, a plan to move ahead and move ahead quickly because it really is needed. Councilor Salter. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, yeah, I was just going to um, confirm that uh, what they're saying is they're concerned about the location of the garbage cans, maybe to move it to um, ensure less noise disruption. And so there's several several of them saying that. So that's that. And the other is that the two fence, uh, the two foot fence isn't tall enough. So they're saying that that um, um, they can look straight into people, the people's houses. And so there, I guess it's a privacy issue. But you can read all these um, and then. I don't think um, it's going to be um, hard for you to mitigate most of what's in here. It's, it seems pretty um, common sense and, and not uh, not terribly expensive. Just maybe changing up, uh, you know, some some locations and maybe the fence and so on. But I, I don't. I think it's. I, I also um, support this this uh, this building and, and and the rentals. Yeah, you know, it's um, desperately needed. And, our community for sure. Uh, I was at the, uh, the uh, open house. A couple of things we committed to right away was to ensure that the, the, the company that we deal with uses uh, plastic lids as opposed to the metal lids. Um, we'll now look at, um, you know, David will look at uh, the fact that he can move the, that area for the, the garbage bins. And the other thing to help mitigate uh, for the neighbors with the four story buildings, we're committed to put in frosted glass on the, the balconies so that um, when people are sitting, uh, having a, an evening out on their balcony, the neighbors aren't looking uh, right at people sitting on a deck uh, in the backyard. Have you looked at the new technology for waste bins? Uh, I read well, a few months ago that there's a, there's a solar powered, what it does is it, not only, not only does it take away smells and stuff like that, but it compacts the waste. Anyway, I'll, I'll leave that to you for what it's worth. Um, might want to look on. I mean, that's pretty easy to find. It's it's on the web, I think. I get I get I get going on uh, the new technology from time to time. But I, I do I do want to thank you, like my fellow councillors, that you know this is uh, rental accommodation. Is simply, we're 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 full up the way th way, way things are now. And I would imagine that when whenever you get this built, uh, you'll probably have a waiting list because it's that serious in Parksville. And I know you know that because you, some of your backers are, are doing this for the empl their employees who can't find a place to live in Parksville. That's, that's correct. Yeah. Well, and, and I, I would like to comment, uh, your staff, uh, your planning staff has been great to deal with so far. And I had uh, conversations last week uh, just about um, how we actually move to the next stages. So that's, uh, the architect was given his marching orders on the next uh, stages of the plans uh, based on our, our feel of how the meeting went tonight, so thank you for your good your feedback. Well, all I can tell you is the director of planning reminds me how busy he is, so that's, that's a good sign. <laughs> Never a dull moment. No rest for the wicked, I always tell him. Okay, thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. again for coming. Appreciate it. Okay, members of council, moving along, we have three pieces of correspondence tonight. The first one is from the Canadian Municip Federation of Canadian Municipalities, the voluntary contribution of the FCM Legal Defense Fund and Travel Fund. I need a mover and a seconder. Moved by Councillor Rhodes, seconded by Councillor Powell. Um, staff requires direction of the council wishes to contribute to these voluntary funds. We've been doing that, haven't we, Mrs. Comas? We haven't? This is the first year? Okay, do so. Councilor Oates. The, the motion is to receive the, re, the correspondence at this receive point. Receive. All, all, all in favor of receiving? 
And the next issue is that do we, the council wish to contribute to these voluntary funds? Oh, we did. We did. We did. I did that. Yeah. I, I just jumped ahead to the next item. So I, I, what about, how does staff feel? Does anybody want to make a motion about giving direction to staff as to whether we wish to contribute to these voluntary funds for 2018? You'll make the motion. I have a secondary for that. Seconded by Councillor Beal. Discussion? All those in favor? What's, what's, isn't, there, isn't there an amount in the report? What's the amount in the report? Mrs. Keeler. Um, Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just had a, I just had a quick explanation. If Council would like me to read um, what the request is, um, so FCM is asking whether Council would like to support two annual voluntary contribution amounts. The first one is $131.40, which is used to support attendance at the AGM for FCM, but it's only for elected officials who meet the criteria. Um, and to date, our council members have not met the criteria of being appointed to FCM's board or a standing committee, so we would not be eligible to receive that funding. And then the second item is for the Legal Defense Fund, um, which is $302.21, and FCM uses this to participate as an intervener in legal cases where uh, municipal jurisdiction is, is being questioned. So they essentially play an active role in cases where the ability of municipalities to use their jurisdiction has been challenged, um, whether it be by another level of government or by a private enterprise. And we have not to date participated in these voluntary funds. Okay, Councillor Powell. Thank you, Your Worship. I put the for motion forward so we could have the discussion because I did read everything that we received in our package. And I wondered too about the travel because I know that there, there's the mayor and one other councillor usually goes to the FCM. I've heard smaller communities that actually use their air miles to go. And I did have a discussion, but you're right, it doesn't impact us. We don't have anybody on the board. Here I am putting a motion forward and speaking against it. So yeah, I, 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 I put it forward just for the discussion. I, I don't necessarily support it. Anybody, any other comments from members of the council? Councillor Beale. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. Actually, my understanding of the uh, of the transportation was that this was for the purpose of, of select committees and not necessarily the regular uh, conference. But perhaps I missed something there. Is that my under? Am I wrong there? Mrs. Keel. Um, yeah, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through you to Councillor Beale. Yeah, it covers attendance at the AGM but only if the elected officials are also members of either a select committee or the AGM board, or sorry, the FCM board. And to date, we're not aware of any of our councillors being in that role. Um, we do, as Councillor Powell said, we do send two members, but we would not be eligible for having the cost covered if we were to contribute. Um, what it would do is help another small community to send somebody without paying. Any further comments from members of council? Councillor Beale. Uh, I have a question of our mayor who has attended more of the FCM uh, conferences than I have and because it does seem to me, my question is are these members not there um, on all of our behalfs and therefore you know the idea is that we all chip in a little bit so that if someone is from a small community they are able to take part um, how, how big a role does this play and I would appreciate the mayor's comments and thoughts on this topic there, there are there are members of the FCM that go to the FCM conference that do do participate and do volunteer and some of them are very very small communities when I looked at the amount of money, I, I personally don't have a problem with what, what kind of money they're asking for. But to answer your question, you know, the, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities is a great organization. It's a national organization. It's a, it's a body of knowledge. And, uh, you know, that when you go to these conferences, you benefit from, from everyone's experience. The, the items for resolution are, are minimal. They're upwards of two or three or four at the most. It's not like you go, when you go to UVCM or, or AVICC where you've got 6,000 6, resolutions on the, not I'm exaggerating, but you've got a lot of resolutions. 
So again, coming back to the amount of money being requested and the value that it provides to some some other smaller communities that, that don't have the wherewithal, I'm I'm personally supportive. Councillor So. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, I, and I could be, I may be mistaken, um, but it, it's my understanding that, um, well, certainly uh, here, uh, we go to FCM, the mayor goes, and one other councillor goes. Um, and so if one other councillor were sitting on some board or something that year, they could go, the mayor goes, What? nothing's changed. Well, um, paying extra money makes no sense to me because that community would already have um, that in place because they're going. So it doesn't make sense to me to uh, to, to pay when the, they're already going. It doesn't make sense at all. I'm unless, looking, unless I'm looking at the bigger picture. For someone that wouldn't be going in the first place, but I'm, I would like uh, clarification, perhaps from Kiva or someone, because it seems to me that, uh, yeah, if, if Mary was sitting on the board or Councillor Bio were sitting on the board, she would go with the mayor. They would, there would be no extra cost because they, we always do take one extra person. Only, only if Councillor Beale were coming, that it was her, it was her turn. If it was somebody else's turn. Okay. So can can let's, I get can come. I get a response? So first okay. What do you want? You husband? want? Well, Mrs. Keeler, uh, respond to that. Um, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think I understand. Um, so, Councillor Salter, I believe, is asking, would it make any difference to our councillors if they were to attend? Is that correct? Um, so, uh, unless one of our councillors was attending as a member of the FCM board or as a member of a, uh, who was appointed to a standing committee from FCM, they would pay the normal amount. We would not be eligible for their costs to be recovered. It, this would be for a member of a small community who meets all of the eligibility criteria, so we would be covering someone else kind of for the public good, I guess, is a way to describe it. Um, unless, of course, a councillor in the future were to be elected or appointed to one of those boards or committees, and then they would be eligible to get their full travel costs reimbursed. Councillor Oates, then Councillor Fong. Okay, on the travel fund, the way I see it is, is that it should someone on this uh, council or Parksville's council at some time in the future be elected to an FCM board or committee, not to be confused with the conference, Right. If they were to be elected to that border committee, this fund would then uh, uh, help subsidize uh, the, the city of Parksville to send that councillor to that meeting. I, I also believe, I, I don't believe contributing to that fund is a requirement for that. I think we get in on that anyway. This is just part of being part of the federation. Are you going to pay your 131 bucks so that somebody from some other community that has less than 55,000 people can go to these things? So we're going to get it anyway, you know. But, you know, if we're going to be part of it, maybe we should pay it for the $131 that's there. And uh, the, the I did last year, I don't think we had a request last year for the travel part. I mean, last year we had a request for it. We did for the travel part as well. I remember the one about their legal fund and that we didn't support that. Uh, for me, I could support both of them. I think that if you're part of an organization, uh, you, it's important that you pay the dues and support these other communities. For the $130 that we're talking about, you know, uh, I'm, I'm fine with it either way. Councillor Powell. Okay, so we're going to call the vote. All those in favor of... Yeah, we do. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Okay. So what what what's the final amount of money we're voting on? Total 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 dollars. Four. Okay. So, on that on that information, all those in favor? Opposed. That's scary. Thank you. <laughs> I know. That's unanimous. Thanks very much. Okay, here we go on the Parksville Downtown Business Association 2018 Community Park Food Services License Renewal. This is a recommendation to receive the report. Do I have a mover and a seconder to receive? Moved by Councillor Powell, second by Councillor Beal. Any discussion? All those in favor? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, well, that's what the vote was, to receive it. So. Once again, all those in favor of receiving it? Okay, so that's unanimous. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I still wanted to speak to it. 
Okay, Councilor Beal, you have a motion. Councilor Salter, did I, you want to make a comment? I wanted to speak to that. I've been wanting, I wanted to speak to this. To receiving it? Yeah, I wanted to speak to, are you going to make a motion? You want to speak to the motion we just okay. received? Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. <laughs> oh, no, not now? Arising from the report, please, Your Worship. Um, if I may, if I may, worship, I'm going to be rather brief on my introduction as it's already been presented as a delegation. You've already described the addresses of the property. Um, essentially, it's an application to rezone the four subject properties to facilitate a four-story apartment building. Um, in order to do so, two zoning bylaws have been prepared. Um, one is a text amendment that is intended to facilitate as a general zone um, in the text to the bylaw, and then there's a specific bylaw amendment to enact that zone um, on these four properties as they advance through the statutory process and the, those bylaws appear on the bylaws section of the agenda um, and that's all my introduction but if there's any questions on anything please ask are there any questions for mr russell councillor Salter. thank you mr mayor i may have already read this but um there's a lot here so i i've forgotten so so for us to change the zoning now on that particular property, would that have to go to um, to the community for any any community um, feedback? If I may worship through to Councillor Salter, yes, the bylaw amendment applications, um, the bylaws will go to public hearing after first and second reading. Seeing no further questions, I'm going to call the vote on the two recommendations. All those in favor? Oh, thank you. That is unanimous. Once again, Mr. Russell, uh, consideration of a proceeding with notice of, de of a development variance permit and associated development permit application at 1472 Seaway Drive. I need a mover and a seconder. Mrs. Comas, can I take all the three recommendations together? Mover and a seconder. Move by Councillor Beal, seconded by Councillor Powell. Mr. Russell, if you would, please. Certainly, Your Worship, if I may. Um, so for council consideration is a request uh, for development permit and development variance permit on the subject property at uh, 1472 Seaway Drive. In order for council to consider issuance of, of a development permit and development variance permit, um, do the variances we need to proceed with notice. So at this stage, we're requesting uh, council's permission to proceed with notice. Um, this is an existing property. Uh, that had a, a former cottage on the site. Um, it was since demolished and the proponent is um, attempting to build a replacement dwelling um, on the property. Questions for Mr. Russell, uh, Councilor Oates, and then Councilor Powell. So the, the, the decision for Council here tonight is just to start the process. We're not making the final decision on whether or not the variance is being requested. As I understand it, we're going to take public input and that will be provided to us at a future Council meeting and at that time is when we'll make the decision on whether or not to grant the variance. If I may worship through to Council Oates, that's correct, unless Council is a, um, a, a, you know, a, extremely opposed to it, then notice wouldn't proceed if that was the alternative. Okay, seeing no further questions, I'm going to call the vote. All those in favor of the three recommendations opposed, thank you, that is carried. Moving on to reports, the 2018 Community Park Food Services License Renewal. Okay, I have a mover, do I have a seconder? I have a seconder and, and Councillor Beal. Mrs. Kaler, would you please give us the background on this issue? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in January, Council postponed consideration of the request from the Chamber to renew the food truck license um, until the Parksville Downtown Business Association had been given an opportunity to comment. 
The PDBA has since provided input to Council, which showed us correspondence earlier on this agenda. For background, um, I'll be fairly brief as it was provided in January, um, but the Chamber wishes to renew the license of occupation to provide mobile food vending in the community park on a daily basis from May to September. And in addition, the Chamber is requesting Council allow the um, addition of a third food truck on the two existing pads. And staff recommendations have not changed since the previous report and are per the agenda. Questions for Mrs. Kaler. Councillor Powell? Thank you, Worship. And so I'm looking at the recommendations. I do have one question. Number three, uh, the monthly, monthly rental rate will be thirty-seven fifty. And then how did we come to the amount of 937 for the third truck? Oops. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to Councillor Powell, um, I basically added, um, it was half of, I subtracted um, 370, 3750, uh, divided in half, yeah. and then um, in half again to basically come up with what I thought was a third, basically splitting it into three. Um, I don't know if that's very rational because they're going to be he's good the the they're going to be three trucks there yeah they're going to earn the same income yep. and so i think it's only fair that we should charge the same amount for the third truck as we do for the previous other two trucks yeah um, because that's it's it's a business sure and they're benefiting from being down in the park i don't think that because they only get half a pad it should be yeah. a half of a half um well i i use the half just because um kind of felt like they, they wouldn't get the benefit of a full pad, um, but that's certainly fair if council council wishes to change that amount, that's absolutely up to council. Yeah, but they get the benefit of the pad, half a pad, they half get the pad. benefit yeah. of power, they get the benefit of being down there in the park right sure. next to the playground, so I think it should be the same half, it should be half. Just half. It should be a full amount. Right. Yeah, that certainly I can, staff can figure out what that amount would, would be. Would that be a friendly amendment? I'd like to make an amendment that the cost to the additional truck is the same as the other two trucks that will be on those pads. So essentially, I'm um, sorry, Mr. Well, I have a seconder for that. Prorated? Prorated. So instead of 37.50 divided third. by two, and whatever that two is, yeah, the I division see. is what will be charged for the third truck. I can figure out that. Can you do the math? I'm doing it now. I can't do the math really quickly, but can somebody can't do the math? Either. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, it would be eight, the 3750 divided by two is yeah. 1875. Yes. So, and I just halved that uh, yes. to 937. So, um, the, the amount would be 1875 as opposed to 937 in item three. Yes. Thank you. So that that amount would be instead of 937, what Councillor Powell is proposing is 1875. Mm -hmm. Councillor Oates. So, we'd have three trucks there. They'd all be occupying the same amount of real estate? If I may, uh, Mr. Mayor, through you to Councillor Oates, there are two existing pads, and each one would have to obviously move over a little bit. Um, we are not proposing adding an, an additional right, right, pad. Right. Um, so the space would remain the same, but there would be three units instead of two. There'd be three units instead of two. And what about, uh, the, if I understand the intent of Councillor uh, Powell's motion, all three then would be paying the same rent. Yes. Any further comments? Mm -hmm. Councillor Salter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And so I'm just wondering about this piece regarding the PDBA expecting um, $100 from each of the trucks um, because they want them to be an associate member of the PDBA. Is that part of this motion? No? Okay. No. So, Councillor Beale is going to explain it. Okay, then I may want to speak to it when she's okay. done. Okay. Yeah, it, um, it, it, I'm just be, not clear if I should be, I w this should be an additional uh, be at an the an end, but it would, does address that that question. Right now, all Council is dealing with is Councillor okay. Powell's amendment right. to the 1875, and then Councillor Beale's motion would be another, would be arising out of So we have a mover and a seconder on Councillor Beale's motion. We don't? Councillor Powell's. Powell's motion, I'm sorry. Amendment. Amendment. So I'm going to call the vote on the amendment, which is everybody pays 1875. All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. That is carried. All right. Where do we go now? 
Okay, Your Worship, now you have the main motion as amended. You have the main motion as amended, and then arising out of adoption of the main motion, Councillor Buell will introduce her motion. Okay, so main motion as amended. All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you, that is carried. So now we move on to Councillor Beal. Thank you. Uh, yes, I do have an additional uh, motion related to this topic. And uh, my request is that staff be directed to add a clause to the license of oc occupation requiring the chamber to provide confirmation to the city that the vendors who will be operating in the community park under the chamber's authority are associate members in good standing with the Parksville Downtown Business Association prior to the first day of operation of the license. Do I have a seconder for that? So, so there's no seconders, so we're going to move on. Is that correct? There's no seconder? So we move on? All right. Okay, seconded. Uh, you want to go, yeah. go for the discussion? Okay. Go ahead. Yes, um, uh, you know, at the previ a previous meeting, we had um, requested input from the Parkville Downtown Business Association, but... Um, Following that, given that the community park is located within the downtown business improvement area and food vendors benefit from the promo promotional efforts of the Parksville Downtown Business Association, it would be appropriate to request that vendors operating in the community park under the auspices of the license of occupation be required to obtain membership with the PDBA. And we're not meant to favor, uh, show favor for one business over another and the other businesses within the um, Downtown Business Association do in fact uh, pay uh, a membership or an associate membership in this case as they're not a bricks and mortar operation. So that's why I would like to see this in place. Councillor Salter and then Councillor Beal. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And speaking of monopolies, um, that park uh, belongs to the residents of Parksville, the residents of this area. It doesn't belong to the PDBA. And people, anyone who wants to come into that park and, and utilize the park in any way um, should be able to do that without having to pay a fee. It's like, you know, the three little billy goats. You know, you don't go over the bridge unless you pay me. Uh, they're, they are, they've already, uh, they're already taking um, payment from people in the downtown core. This this should not be happening without a choice. The the um, the, uh, the Chamber of Commerce paid a hundred dollars to be able to put the trucks in the park. That's enough. That's enough. And and I I, I really take I, it offends me that 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 this city is allowing a small group to to take charge of business people in our in our city. Uh, some small businesses just can't afford to, to be working out, working out, working out. These are small businesses. They're down there short term. It's a park. And if we're looking for, at taxes, um, they're receiving, the city is receiving $24,000, well, province, $24,000 in taxes from those, uh, those food trucks. Um, the arguments here, you know, well, it's, it's impacting the bricks and mortar. There's bricks and mortar businesses downtown that have food trucks in the park. So, so I, I, I have, I have, um, I have difficulty with this. Uh, I don't think that people should be forced to um, pay now a hundred dollars to be able to, to have a business, a, a food truck in the park. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, it doesn't make sense that, that anyone's doing that. It, there needs to be a choice. And, and if someone wants to be part of the PDBA, so be it. Pay your hundred dollars and now you get to be part of the group. But they shouldn't be forced to do so and they shouldn't be not be able to have a business uh, because they haven't paid their hundred dollars. That, that's not on and that's not, that's not how this council should be supporting small businesses either. Um, and we shouldn't really be involved in it. That we're, we're, it's, it's going too far for our mandate. Councillor Powell. Thank you, Worship. I just don't think we have the right to tell one business to pay another business as a council. The second piece is that um, I disagree with you. I think that the PDBA works very hard on their uh, advertising. The people down in the park benefit from that. 
I think it's only fair that they should pay a fee, but again, I don't think we have the authority to make one business pay another business. They committed last year, all the food trucks committed to pay $100 as per an associate member, that never came through. The Chamber of Commerce committed to, change, to pay $100 last year, that never came through. The $100 has not been paid by the Chamber of Commerce yet. Um, I think that uh, we're overstepping our authority, trying to make, again, one business pay another business. I've had conversations with the PDBA. It is what it is. There are no food trucks down there that are bricks and mortars up on top. So I don't know where you got your information from, but it's incorrect. Um, so, yeah, that's all i got to say. I won't support it. Okay, Councillor Oates. Uh, I don't support it either, Your Worship. Uh, I, su I seconded the motion out of respect to Councillor Beal. I think that anybody that makes the effort to bring forward a motion to Council, I think it's uh, ignorant of us not to second it and have a debate about it. However, I can't support it. I can't support it because I don't believe that we should be policing the uh, PDBA's uh, bylaws or whatever their bylaws are. And uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, you know, whether or not it's, I, I don't want to get into the middle of a disagreement between two organizations that are both worthy and are both striving for the same goal, which is a, which is a more productive, a more uh, viable downtown. So, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't want to take sides or pit one group against the other. I think they're both doing good work. But I think that the PDA should be in organizations that businesses want to join, not an organization that businesses are forced to join. And the other, the other thing that's uh, the overall um, macro issue for me in all of this is we have the um, we have the street fair every Tuesday night, starting somewhere, and uh, if we enforce this for the for the for the food trucks in the park, what's from why, where does the logic come in if you had to, every, everybody that had a, an entry into the street fair would have to pay to join the PDBA. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm opposed to it also. Okay, I'm going to call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? That motion is defeated. Moving on. Okay, we have the, uh, a very cool subject, the District 69 Ice Arena lease. We'll wait for it. This, we're on we're on we're on a slippery situation here. I need a mover and a seconder. Moved by Councillor uh, Powell, seconded by Councillor Beal. Mrs. Keeler, would you please report on this chilly topic? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, unfortunately, I don't know enough about curling to make any smart puns, so I'll just explain. <laughs> this this report seeks council support for a renewal of the existing lease with the Regional District of Nanaimo for the District 69 Arena grounds in the community park. The building is owned by the RDN, but the surrounding area, which is used predominantly for parking, is leased from the city. This area has been leased to um, the Parksville Curling Society through a sublease since 1977. Staff is proposing the addition of a new clause, which would approve a full exemption from municipal taxes for the five-year term. In recent years, Council has approved an amendment to the permissive tax policy to support the curling club being eligible for a full exemption and has also in the past issued grants when the exemption granted was less than 100%. If approved by Council, it's anticipated that this clause would reduce staff time in administering the permissive tax program and working with the club to uh, discuss grants and provide some certainty for the Curling Society with respect to their taxes for the term of the agreement. And the recommendations are per the agenda. That was crystal clear. Thank you. No questions for Mrs. Keeler. All those in favor of the three recommendations, opposed, thank you. That is carried unanimously. Bylaws. Two readings in advance to public hearing. Uh, I need a mover and a seconder for the two recommendations. Councillor Salter, seconded by Councillor Powell. Any questions, comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of the recommendations? Okay, that's unanimous. Yeah.